Hello folks, Richard Moore, USA GSA. And today I, I'm gonna bring a story about a missing person. It's in the Mississippi a database. It's missing since uh, uh, February of 2023, February last year. And this is not just a missing person. This is about someone that was murdered and a corrupt law enforcement working in tandem with their confidential informant snitches have covered this missing person murder up. And this is in Noxaby County, Mississippi. So before I jump into it, I want to encourage you, if you're not subscribed, to subscribe, like, share, and comment. When I say share, I mean share it relentlessly. Corruption absolutely detests free speech. Not only do they detest free speech, the reason they detest free speech is because it often involves the truth and that's all you're going to get here that's all we do expose corruption these corrupt programs and the people behind the scenes we bring it to light and we give voice to the voiceless from coast to coast those that have been dismissed marginalized written off including those that are no longer with us so in the description of this video is our link tree. In that link tree, you'll find other links to other platforms. My blog on WordPress, as well as Substack, where I write informative and detailed articles about individuals that have been targeted by these programs and about these programs and the tactics and so forth that are used in these programs. And so I encourage you to Go over to our Substack or to WordPress, but preferably Substack and subscribe. And by supporting USA GSA, you can become a paid subscriber. For those that wish to take a stand with USA GSA and you like what we're doing and you agree with me that our Constitution is still valid in effect for all American citizens, not just for those that some select few have elected that is valid for for all american citizens you can do that by becoming a patron on patreon that's at usa gsa that link is in there as well by becoming a paid supporter you can start for as little as five dollars a month and the sky's the limit you're taking a stand with usa gsa and you ensure the vitality of this platform and ensure that we continue to grow and that we continue to give voice and continue to expose these corruptions that are happening in plain sight. There's also links in there, ways you can support. Cash App, Chime, Donor Box, I have a GoFundMe, and of course I've already mentioned uh, Patreon and so forth. We're 100% supported by our listeners viewers and uh, followers and folks without you i can't do what i'm doing it's absolutely impossible and we need to be focused on the matters at hand and not be focused and have to be concerned with the ability to extend our reach and to extend our platform and our message so I encourage you to do that today. Even at the bottom of this uh, video here, you'll see the super thanks icon. It's, I believe it's, it may have a, a heart sh uh, shape on there and you can click that. And right now you can immediately uh, make a donation. 
So, this uh, story is about uh, Kenneth Reed. Uh, Kenneth, uh, 30 years old, was reported missing February the 23rd, 2023, at around 10.30 a.m. in Sugar Lake, Mississippi, which is in Knoxville County. Now, I've spoken with some individuals that have knowledge of this particular case. And I'm going to tell you, folks, it's alarming. Does it surprise me? Absolutely not. Is it alarming? Absolutely. It is alarming. Considering the history of Knoxville County with the former sheriff, Grassery, uh, being railroaded out. He oh, wasn't railroaded. But him having his way and raping female inmates. The New York Times covered that story. I covered it. Grassery, I wasn't charged locally. The district attorney, Scott Cologne, didn't do anything. And after the fact, he tried to weigh in and, and claim that uh, he had something to do with him getting prosecuted. And they did prosecute the former sheriff, Grassery, in Knoxville County. And he went to prison for 24 hours. And he's got two or three years probation. That's it. That's it. So, <laughs> keep my hat on for that one. We got a new sheriff in there. That new sheriff is uh, uh, Tom Roby. Now, Roby uh, was a city police officer, and then after Grassery was ousted, ran for sheriff, and they elected him. He did at one time work for Grassery. They had a relationship. And folks, as we know, it, so goes the rest of the world. It's a good old boy deal. And Knoxville County is no exception to the rule. So, uh, uh, Kenneth was last seen at 1030. We understand it. His mother or a family member drove him to his dad's house there in Sugar Lake. His dad had uh, to go to kidney dialysis, and he, by the time Kenneth got there, it wasn't but a few minutes later, his dad had to leave with someone else to go to uh, uh, for his dialysis. Within a half hour of that, the dad is making phone calls. And one of them is to his mother, the way I understand it, saying that he was unable to get Kenneth on the phone. Now, why he was trying to get Kenneth on the phone, I don't know. I believe that, uh, from the way I understand it, that he was concerned about the fact that uh, Kenneth may be yielding or giving in to an old habit, and he might be looking for drugs because he had some money uh, uh, spread out. On his, he saw the money, and uh, that he had he was out counting it or something before he left, and it just uh, that's what it looked like to him. At that time, it's, uh, the chemist wasn't using drugs. He'd been uh, sober for uh, a year or so. Went from 100-something pounds to 240 pounds. But we know that uh, this addiction is a vicious and evil and destructive habit. But none of these things, none of these things about Kenneth's propensity or addiction or propensity to use drugs has anything to do with the fact that he was murdered. The family were, was unable to, uh, uh, to locate uh, Kenneth, as they say, Kenny. 
when they went to the house where he was dropped off, his dad's house, his dad's vehicle was missing. And so was Kenny. I believe it was the next day or later that day, the vehicle was found uh, several miles from that house in the middle of the road. It had ran out of gas. No sign of Kenneth. Kenny. Uh, Kenneth had a uh, an automatic pistol in his possession that belonged to his uh, his dad. He also had a cell phone. And no telephone calls were made after he was dropped off at his dad's house. No text messages, no telephone calls. Where his vehicle was found was not far from the river. And so the story is that he ran out of gas. He walked to the river that was flooding. It had risen due to a lot of rain. It had swelled to, half, to twice its size. The current moving 30 plus miles an hour that somehow Kenny decided after he ran out of gas. Now, he was in good spirits when he left his mother's house. He was in good spirits when his dad left it. But somehow he got that vehicle, waded up into a raging river, pulled the trigger, and there it is. Case closed. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you, that ain't what happened. There has been no investigation. Why? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Just within less than a quarter mile from Ken Kenny's dad's house was the home of Mrs. Uh, uh, Bester, B-S-T-E-R. Aretha, as she's affectionately known as Tit. That's T I T or T I T T. Tit is what they call her. Tit is the matriarch of the Bester clan there in Sugar Lake. Got a long history of vice and drugs. And right now, at this minute, they're serving illicit and illegal drugs right out. Of Tit's house. Okay? It ain't no secret. It is no secret. Kenny left his dad's house. He walked to Tit's house. And we don't know who all was there. But we know some of them that were there. Larry Bester, her son, and Blake Bester was out there. Blake Bester has a store there in town. Is involved in this. And Eric Douglas is also involved in this picture. What happened? Well, we don't know exactly what happened. But all signs point to this. When Kenny managed to get to the Bester home, probably by drugs, an argument happened. What were they arguing about? Well, there has been a long running concern. First of all, this, uh, this, this Douglas guy, I don't think he was there at that time. He's in the picture. The argument was this the family was doing everything they needed to do to keep Kenny away from drugs. The Besters knew it. The Besters knew that the family would get an uproar every time they found out that Kenny was using drugs. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was making them hot. They didn't need Kenny over there making them hot. 
and the way they saw it, Kenny had already made them hot. Now, hot to who? They wasn't hot to the sheriff. Wasn't hot to Grassery before he left, and they sure wasn't hot to Roby, because they, working hand in hand with the sheriff, are able to continue their drug trade, their drug empire, if you will, there at Sugarlack in Knoxville County. You see, we had Sugarlack. Uh, Tip Besser is top of the food chain, and that's her people. That's her business. And sure, law enforcement could sweep in and lock her and her clan up and shut it down. Why haven't they done it? I won't tell you why they haven't done it. That's one, two, three, four, five people that have been stopped and locked up. Or they can cooperate with each other and allow the flow of drugs to continue on the streets and continue to destroy our lives while they get detailed information on all the clientele. And so now with this COPS program and this task force made up of federal, state, and local officials, plus community members, have a lot of work cut out for them. Now they've got the names of the clientele, which could range into the hundreds of people that they can target, they can list and justify the grant money to continue this program to target Americans, American citizens, Mississippians. Not target them by watching them, catch them do something illegal and arrest them. No. But to target them with this program is a long-term program that ends with a victim either being dead or life in a penitentiary or life in an insane asylum. Total annihilation is the end game for those that are targeted. You see, the besters are feeding the system. Without crime and vice, these criminals with badges haven't got anything to do, folks. Nothing. And this is happening in plain sight. Kenny happened to be a wild card in this scenario. Not the fact they didn't mind serving him anytime, any place. Uh, some people around there believe, well, all they sell is crack cocaine. We know better now. You can go up in there and, and you're going to have a hard time finding crack. Get all the meth and fentanyl you want. That's what's going on. And the sheriff has green lighted it. Y'all hear me? The sheriff has green-lighted it. This guy, that, his family, they're serving drugs, are front-line crash dummy snitching rats working for law enforcement. This is why we still have no answers of what happened to Kenny Reed. Now, according to the sheriff, they're not investigating it. It's open and shut. The family, I'm told, had to hire someone from out of town, out of state, that had a dog and two handlers. They came down and they caught the scent from the vehicle that was left in the middle of the road. Now, that means that Kenny could have been sitting in that vehicle anytime. Didn't mean that he was sitting in it that day. And they and they but they had a scent for about according to them about forty feet and that was it. So he'd been out there, according to the dog the dog or the dog handler. We really don't know what the dog said. Uh, Y'all know how I feel about these. Uh, it's not so much as lying like a dog, lying like the dog handler, because whatever the handler said. But these were these were independent dog handlers. The family also insisted that law enforcement was on the scene while these independents. Law enforcement, they could have got your own dog, but they didn't. They wouldn't do it. They don't have one in Knoxville County. Did they call Clay County or Lowndes County or Winston County? No, 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 no. They made, it was all on the victim's family to investigate this. That's your first red flag, folks.
your first red flag. When the family insisted that uh, they go back to the scene where he was left, let's pick up the scent. And the dog did. And they headed straight for where? Tit's house. When they got real close to Tit's house, was getting ready to make a turn at the stop sign with the dog and everything, and the cops and all of them there, the cops put the quietest to the deal. Now, for those that are not from the South, I have no idea what the quietus means. That means to bring something to an abrupt halt. The family was then told, this is where it stops. We're not going to go any further than this. We're done. That's it. And if you go past this, we're not going to be responsible for what will happen to you. In other words, they were trying to use intimidation and scare tactics to stop this white family from going in further into this all-black neighborhood, just another block or so, to where the dog was leading them. Wonder why. Now, it's law enforcement. You tell me they were in fear. They were with them. They said, you got nothing to worry about. We're here. Let's go on. They told me they didn't have probable cause to go on. And folks, that, what we call that is bullshit. If the dog has picked up a scent, okay, that's probable cause. If they did like the fact that it was a, a independent contractor with a dog, at that point, the direction the dog was going in, they could have easily called in other officials with K9 and finished the show. They didn't do it. Why did they want to do it? Because they knew where the dog was going. They knew what happened to Kenny. They know where Kenny's body is. I don't believe it's in the river. Don't believe it. Not for a minute. They did not want to expose their ace boon coon, Kit Bester and her clan, and their thriving illicit drug trade there in Sugar Lack. That, now, that's the, that's the deal, folks. When the dog gets a scent, and the Supreme Court is already, this is settled business, settled law. Even if they're on the outside of someone's property, and the dog catches a scent that takes them into somebody's property, that's probable cause. They don't need a warrant. They, they got probable cause to keep on marching. That's a fact. They didn't tell them that. They didn't give them any options other than it's over with, let it go. We don't have probable cause. They had plenty of probable cause. I just told you, uh, the, I've given you a synopsis, a scenario of what, what has gone on. I'm, I'm sure there's more, but it's all the, the same. There is an insurmountable amount of evidence and unanswered questions surrounding this case. So 30-year-old Kenny Kenneth Reed was brutally murdered at the hands of state actors working and cooperating with law enforcement. And because of that, that was a problem. Because this machine, the Bester family, is feeding the justice system <laughs> the injustice system, uh, they can't afford for that cash cow to shut down. Number two, and apply the right pressure to, to the matriarch, Tit, Aretha, Tit, Bester. I imagine that we could revisit the old saying, loose lips sink ships. She knows too much. 
and make her mad, she's going to talk. You make Larry mad, going to talk. If you make uh, 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 Blake mad, he's going to talk. It's also understood that that vehicle that belonged to Kenny's dad passed right in front of a convenience store that's operated by the Besters. That's just one one business. We don't know what all they got their hands in other than that convenience store and the sheriff's department. They've got all types of surveillance equipment that they admitted showed the vehicle passing in front of the store that day. They refused to release that video footage to the family. Law enforcement hadn't asked for it, nor had they attempted to secure a warrant to ask for it as being a part of a, an investigation of someone missing and a possible homicide. They didn't ask for it. Wonder why. I mean, if if you made it known that, yeah, I've got it. It's on there. It shows up all this. But I'm not giving it to you. Uh, that guy's too looking pretty crazy, hasn't it? I can't imagine. I can't imagine saying that. Somebody's missing, probably murdered. I've got footage, but I don't give it to you. Oh, by God, you are. You got the right sheriff with a backbone? Honey, you ain't got no option. He'll get a search warrant after he gets the video footage, and it'll stick. But no. According to Sheriff Tom Robin, there ain't no investigation, and what's been done on it has been done by Tina Williams. She is the investigator with the Knoxville County Sheriff's Department. She wears two hats, or probably three or four. Two main hats she wears. And she's a lead investigator for Knox County Sheriff's Department. She's also the town marshal for where? Sugar Lake. And she, my friend, was the one investigating this, heading this thing off. Now, her and Tit are like two peas in a pod. Tighter than ticks on a dog's ass. So I'm sure... It was a thorough investigation or whatever they did. Somebody else see a problem with this other than me. I see a big problem with it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been over a year. It wasn't long after the dad going the dialysis and the disappearance of his son. They took a gun and took his own life. He couldn't live with it. So we got two lives. That blood is on the hands of the besters and the sheriff and investigators in Knoxville County, period. They have not been held accountable. We aim to change that, ladies and gentlemen. We aim to change that. We're going to expose it and continue to expose it. Kenny, his mother, I know that I haven't talked with her, had met her, but I do know this. A day has not passed that her very soul hasn't absolutely been broken and poured out and absolutely crushed. That was her only child. She has to wake up every day and face the fact that her son is gone. Written off. There's no justice. No investigation. The system that she thought was in place that would be there when something bad happened, she's realized that was all a facade. They want to use talking points and talk about an individual's past. Well, Kenny had used drugs and he was wanting drugs. It's his own fault. 
And folks, let me tell you, I absolutely reject any idea of the fact that whatever a person's habits were or were not justifies cold-blooded murder and a cold-blooded criminal cover-up by law enforcement. You, I don't care what you say about the victim, and they love to criminalize the victim. The same way as the young women that were getting raped by the sheriff there in Knoxville County. It was everything. If they wouldn't wear their clothes so tight, they wouldn't have got raped. They was asking for it. Is that the way it is? The way it is in the dirty south. That's the way it is in Knoxville County. And it's going to stay that way in Knoxville County. It shouldn't matter what race they are. Sure, McKinney was white. And sure, all the other players in this scenario are black. There's no justification. Has there been instances where, where the tables were turned and it was dismissed? Absolutely. Where does it end? If this tables were turned and it was uh, someone's child, he was black in a predominantly or exclusively white situation, and this happened, I don't believe that uh, it would have gone away this easily. I don't believe that. It may have, and in many cases, in the dirty South, it does. Because it hadn't been that long ago that the African Americans couldn't share a restroom, a water fountain, a restaurant, or a motel, or anything else with white people. It hadn't been that long ago, folks. They get the, the, the Civil Rights Bill in the 60s, okay? That mindset is still alive and well. But I'm going to tell you, it's both sides of the fence. Because we've got these coon Uncle Toms that are out here, and they're targeting their own all over this state, all over the South. Not all like that. For the citizens of this state and this country and Knoxville County, Mississippi, this should be appalling that this is going on in 2024. It's going on. It should be absolutely should turn your stomach. Where is the rage and the outcry of we're not going to tolerate this? This is it. Enough is enough. It's not like the besters just started peddling dope last week. This has been going on for years. And nobody's been sent to a penitentiary over it. It's business as usual. Even when they murdered Kenny Reed. I think we owe it to Kenny's family. The fact that his dad took his own life, he couldn't bear it. His mother has to live. She deserves better than this. She deserves to have some type of closure. She hadn't had the, 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 the decency of being able to have a funeral to mourn or anything else. That's something that eats and grinds on her every single day. I'm quite sure that she's questioning God and everybody else. That's why. And I can tell you, God's got the answers. He sees it, and he's not amused. And what's done in the dark will be shown and spoke about in the light. You can rest assured. Everything that you cover up, you can believe one thing. Somebody's going to come around and uncover it. And that's what we're doing. I'm going to post in the description of this video a link. That's with change.org. It's a petition in regards to Kenny's disappearance and so forth. I encourage you to click that link, sign the petition, share the petition, support the petition. Attorney General of the State of Mississippi, Lynn Fitch, has adamantly stated 
we're not going to do anything. The sheriff, as Adam Lee stated, I am not going to refer this to MBI, Mississippi Bureau of Investigation, nor am I going to refer this to the FBI. Of course he's not. Of course, the Attorney General, and we're asking this petition that they reverse their initial decision as not to do anything about it. Now that we are going to and continue to shed light on this murder that's been dismissed as simply someone that went missing, they lost their bearings, took their life, shot themselves, jumped in the river, and a body never washed up, et cetera, et cetera. That's BS. I know it, and you know it. Not buying it. Not buying it. Ask them to do their job. The sheriff needs to be investigated. Those officers involved in this cover-up needs to be investigated. And anybody in Sugar Lake that's got the last name Bester needs to be immediately locked up with the sheriff and this investigator as well. Throw them all in the same jet. Throw them under it. That's how you clean up corruption. But they're scared of them. They're scared of this clan of, of, of people that are deeply embedded in Sugar Lake, Mississippi. They're scared to do anything. Why are they so scared? Somebody's got to get a backbone. You have no business with a badge if you ain't got a backbone. You got a backbone up to the point you have to do something that's real. And then other people that don't have badges got to step in and do your job for you. You have no credibility, Roby. You have no integrity. And that's the only thing that keeps you where you are is this assumption of your integrity. And integrity, ladies and gentlemen, is like virginity. Once it's gone, it's gone. Roby has none. That department has none. There's officers in that department that are not involved in this, but they're complacent because they hadn't dared to speak out and speak up. That's what we're waiting on. There's other people in Knoxville County that have credible information. It's a who, what, when, where, other than the fairy tales that they want us to believe that he ran his car as far as he could go, ran out of gas, middle of the road, got out, left his phone in the car, truck, walked towards the river, uh, Dog didn't take a cent all the way to the river. So he walked 40 feet, killed himself, levitated to the river, and then submerged himself and stayed under there. And folks, I know ain't nobody buying that. I sure ain't buying it. Those are the facts. That That is the details of the deal. That's the details of the story, which is unmitigated BS. I'm not buying it. The family's not buying it. And I've got the rest of the world ain't buying it. Folks, let me hear from you. Share the petition and ask that you keep this family that I've talked about in your prayers. And also pray that somebody, somebody will wake up in Knoxby County and outside Knoxby County and start a little house cleaning. It's time that some people start getting arrested and some people get charged and get off this BS. Because if it happened to him, it's happened to others. We have just at the tip of the iceberg with this corruption, folks. Share, subscribe, and like, and I welcome your comments. Until next time, God bless you. Like a